Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening Birmingham. Back again. I always <laughs> like to call her my favorite city council person, Wardeen Alexander for District 7. Councilor Alexander, how are you doing today? I'm doing great today. How are you? Good. It seems like you're on the road. I'm on the road. It's getting ready for the weekend, trying to get in a little football. So I'm on my way. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out your day to um, come on the well, podcast. I'm always happy to talk to you. Yeah, and let, let people know what you're doing in, the, in your district for District 7. Um, before we start, I guess the issue that's on a lot of people's mind right now in the city of Birmingham is public safety. Correct. And one of the things you all just passed was a Birmingham Police Department recruitment and retention package for $16 million. Can you tell me a little more yeah. about it? Well, yes. We all know that we've had a rash of um, gun violence. Um, our families have been affected. Our city has been affected by gun violence, of course, nationwide. But in the city of Birmingham, we have particularly had um, a rash of uh, incidents where affecting our families and affecting our residents. So to retain and recruit police officers, we on Tuesday unanimously passed a ret retention and recruitment package, which is designed to en enable our police force to have more boots on the ground, as well as to retain those officers who are already working to protect and serve. I was excited to support this package that was brought to us by the mayor. Of course, we want to keep our neighborhoods safe, we want to keep our city safe, we want to have safety for our residents, as well as for people as they visit our city. And this is a way to ensure that we have the right number of police officers to protect and serve our city. And one thing I like about this package is, for years, this has been no secret that a lot of people love joining the Birmingham Police Department because they can serve 20 and then go somewhere else. That's correct. What we're seeing, of course, we do start the minimum age to start mm -hmm. as a police officer is 19. So after mm -hmm. 20 years of service, you could be 39, 40 years old, and you're ready for full retirement. Of course, with our APOS training and the certified training that we offer as a city, it also mm -hmm. has our officers very well prepared as they go into the other suburban areas that have mm -hmm. less crime and have less number of citizens. We want to keep these dedicated, well-trained officers in the city so that, again, we can have the right number of people to have boots on the ground to service our communities. And um, this is nationwide. This is not unique to the city of Birmingham. I was just at an Alabama League of Municipalities meeting with a public safety committee, one of the advocacy groups, and we're talking about legislation that we can want to support within the state of Alabama. One is Glock switches that are being placed on weapons that cause multiple rounds at one time. We want to enforce the state laws. We already have federal laws on the books, but we want to enforce and uh, enact certain state laws. We feel that will be a help for us. We also have included in that package to include the number of police cars. So now that our police officers will be able to take those cars, take them home at night, and then they'll be able to get to the scenes quicker. This also gives us an added bonus of having that uh, you'll be able to see those police cars in our neighborhoods, and that adds mm -hmm. an extra level of defense or security for our neighborhoods. Yes, that's what I think the take home car thing is very, yes, very. Yes, that seems to be. I actually asked, uh, you know, what makes that such a, um, a, a nice item for recruitment? And most officers do like the opportunity to have those cars at home with them. They're able to use those. And again, uh, gives us a quicker response time. So I definitely supported that. Another piece of the package is uh, a, a amount of time for mental health break for our offices. officers. You can just imagine the stress that it puts on them personally as they go about serving and protecting. So we're offering some time off where they'll be able to take that mental health break. And that's very important to us as well. Okay. So next thing I want to talk to you about is um, the, the network interruption. And how yes. did that happen? Well, as you know, um, earlier this year, we did have a network interruption where it did cause us to have to 
perform some of our duties manually. That would, would be receiving monies, um, uh, dispensing monies um, from our financial departments, keeping up with um, staff work schedules and things like that, and even the way we communicate with each other. And so as a result of this network disruption, we have not fully approved the FY25 budget. But now we feel that we're in a better space. We have corrected any uh, problems that occurred with the network interruption. And so you should be looking soon for the FY25 budget to be brought forward to us for full and final approval. Okay. Um, of course, we're in Magic City Classic Month. Well, um, we're ge gearing up for the Magic City Classic. It's that one time a year where we're all out on uh, HBCU focus. And um, it's a great time for fans, alums, residents in the city where they can come out and cheer on their best team, whether those A&M Bulldogs or the mighty Alabama State Hornets. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I can't believe this time of the year again. Man, it really is. I know mm -hmm. fall is upon us, and that's why I'm particularly encouraged for this year. We want to get our fans, our residents out and experience some of that HBCU uh, love. Of course, we have the best bands that will be in, on our field. We'll have so many visitors in the city. And again, it's just a great opportunity, family, friends, alums, graduates, and those supporters of both schools to come to the oldest, the granddaddy of mm -hmm. Magic City Classics and yes. of HBCU Classics. So you are already, this month y'all approved the, the classic in the budget, right? Oh, we so, did that. Oh, that's been uh, approved uh, several months ago. And so again, mm -hmm. uh, we're supporting both schools financially with scholarships and okay. uh, we're just very excited to have both of those teams in the city okay um next um projects in your district for d7 from the uh, arpa projects oh yes well we are almost at the final time where we are just creating those projects being sure that we have those projects approved and because we don't want to leave any of that money on the table just um so that everyone is a reminder of the state of Al the city of Birmingham was allocated 141 million billion dollars uh for mm -hmm. for use for ARPA funds and within that money each district was given three million dollars where we could use for our various district projects. I'm very happy to say that we had 12 projects that have been approved and that are about to be started within the district. Uh, it runs from stormwater water, water uh, control as well as uh, working with stem cell programs, improvements in three of our district area parks and so i'm excited for what how we'll be able to use this money to improve the quality of life in our district okay yeah i know one thing about the offer money is like if you don't use it by a certain point you That's gotta right. send that money back right by december 31st of this year if those funds are not allocated and approved they will go back into the general treasury we don't want to give any of that money back <laughs> So you're gonna see a lot of shoveling, everybody, between now and starting to see it. Exactly. Um, so we're excited. We're excited to um have those pro programs. You'll be able to go to my D7 page or the Birmingham City website, and we'll be listing all the projects for all nine districts, as well as those city projects that will be funded out of those ARPA dollars. Okay. One last thing. Any infrastructure updates? Anything? In the district? Well, yes, we do have um, our capital projects that are underway in the district. We are doing some construction around uh, Winona Oxmoor Road, some of those areas that have, we have uh, some standing water. We have some uh, areas that we will be repaving, and this will help to make the, that travel along those two roads we know the Oxmoor Road and the area surrounding it that will make that travel much more enjoyable and safe for those residents that travel those pathways. So those projects are underway, and uh, I'll be able to give more updates on that next month. Okay. Well, Councilor Alexander, thank you so much um, for coming on. Um, hope to see you. Well, I know I'll see you some point this month. Well, I appreciate. Message. Sorry for the ride, but um, oh. I'm. Just glad to have this opportunity to talk to you. So I'll see you next month.
See you. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.